because see, there's there's three main ways that you make money in real estate. I, technically, there some people say four or five, but but essentially, you make money from cash flow. So if you buy a property and you collect the rents, and the rents are higher than the mortgage, or if you bought it cash, you're going to make money from there. Okay, now that's the smallest way you make money, but you do make money from cash flow, right? So for example, you buy a property that has a cap rate of, let's say, 6%. That just means that if you bought it all cash, you would get 6% return on your money, which is not bad, it, you know, just, just compared to other investment vehicles. So that's one way. The second way that you make money is through depreciation. So depreciation, at least in US tax law, is, is such that if I have a property, let's say it's $100,000 in value, let's say 80,000 of that is structural and 20,000 is land on the $80,000. I can straight line depreciate that property over 23 and a half years. Right? So that is, and I think I, I always mix it up the, the number of years, but it's 20 something. I think it was 23 and a half, but anyway, for residential property, what that means is that I can take that $80,000 divided by 23.5 and I can show that as a loss on my taxes every single year, right? So you make money through that depreciation. The third way that you make money, uh, actually, I'll, I guess I'll give four in this case, uh, is principal pay down. So you have a mortgage on the property, you know, especially if you have tenants paying it. And even if it breaks even, it washes. So you got zero cash flow on it. The mortgage is being paid down. So you're paying down the principal, right? So you can imagine if I held a property for 20 years, I had quite a bit of principal pay down on that property that is essentially free, right? I'm, I'm not paying that. My tenants are paying that, or that's one way of looking at it. Uh, and then the fourth way, which is actually the most important way you make money is through leveraged appreciation. And leverage appreciation is the key. That's where you make the most money. What that means is that, so let's say I bought a property cash. If I bought a property cash, $100,000 property, let's say there's a 6% return on that property. I would make $6,000 a year. I'd make and a 6% return. when you buy cash, return. are you talking about just deposit or full straight cash? Full straight cash. Yeah, so just like if we just invested a hundred. Yeah. Yeah, if I did that, I wouldn't have leverage appreciation. I would still have appreciation. Let's say that that property goes up in value. Okay. So I have a hundred thousand dollar property. I bought it cash and it goes up to, uh, it goes up 10% in value. So it's now worth $110,000. What's my return on my investment? Say that again. It's a question. So I have a hundred thousand dollar property. Yeah. I bought it all cash. It goes yeah. up uh, 10% in value. What's the return on my, on my investment? I made 10 K. Yeah. And what, what in, in terms of percentage? 10%. Yeah, 10%. Okay. Now, that was the easy one. <laughs> it's a it's trick, kind of a trick question. So now let's say, say that same property I buy for $100,000. Okay. But instead, I put 20% down on it. So I invest $20,000 into the property. Okay. I rent it out and everything. I lose the 6% cash flow on it. Forget about that. The you know, it ends up being a wash on the cash flow. Tenant rents it out. Okay. But I but I break even on it. Okay. Now, same scenario, it goes up ten thousand dollars. So it, the property value increases by 10%. Now what's my return on investment? I don't know. What is it? It's uh so okay, so if it was all cash, right, and it went up 10%. Then I, you said I made ten thousand dollars, right? So I'm still making ten thousand dollars, but I invested a hundred thousand dollars in the first scenario, and I made ten thousand dollars. So, uh, so that's a ten percent return. In the second scenario, I invested twenty thousand dollars, but I still made ten thousand. So I got a fifty percent return on my initial investment, and that's the power of leverage appreciation, and that's the the key to becoming rich and to making money in real estate is that you're you're buying these properties, right? And my strategy is to buy and hold. Okay, that's the only sensible strategy for real estate investing. Now, a lot of people are going to get mad and upset, but I'll talk about the other activities I don't, I don't consider to be investing. They're real estate business activities, but they're not investing. To me, the definition of an investment is that it has to not rely on future events in order for it to produce a return, right? So speculation, in my mind, is anything where you need something to happen or you're hoping something will happen or you have good knowledge that you think something will happen. That's speculation. Investing in, in my definition is that it doesn't matter right now. It's a good deal, right? So, so in the, in that case, right, what we're doing or what my strategy is I'm buying properties. Okay. I'm renting them out. The tenants are paying the mortgage. So I'm getting the principal pay down. I might get a little bit of cash flow on it. Or if I get zero, it's fine. doesn't matter. Okay. So I'm getting the principal pay down. I'm getting huge depreciation. Okay. On the properties, especially when you own a lot of properties, but I'm biding time 
for them to go up in value because I have leverage appreciation. It's a leveraged investment, right? So if I'm 5X levered, which means that I'm essentially borrowing 80% of the money from the bank, I still make money on the bank's money. That's the key to the leverage appreciation. And remember the debt service for that money that I'm borrowing is paid by the tenant, is paid by the rent that's coming in. So that's taken care of. So I'm essentially getting the bank's money for free and then getting to value from the value from that appreciation, which is a leverage to my investment. And that's the strategy, right? And if you do that, then you keep on buying properties every year, then what's going to happen is that you're going to be getting somewhere, you know, you might not get 50% return on your money every year, but if real estate on average just goes up, let's say 3%, okay, it's a 5X lever. So if, if you have a piece of real estate and you're levered, such that you've put 20% down on it, whatever the appreciation is, you can multiply that by five. So if real estate goes up a modest 3% per year, you're actually making three times five, 15% on that investment. That's not including all the other ways you make money, the depreciation, the principal pay down. So on average, a real estate investment, even if you're dumb, okay, even if you make a stupid investment, it's not, it's just, you just buy properties at market value, which I, I recommend you buy them under market value. But even if you do, and they're not great investments, you're still probably going to get somewhere between a 15 to 20% return on your money. And if you buy good investments, it could be 30, 40, 50% return on your money. And, I, and we're not talking overall return. We're not talking irrespective rate of return at the end of the, we're talking yearly return, right? If my property goes up 3% and I have 20% down into it, I'm getting 15% appreciation return every single year. So that compounds very quickly. And that's why the compound interest calculator is such a great tool is because if you punch the numbers in, if you say, okay, well, if I invest in the stock market and I put a hundred thousand dollars in the stock market and an S and P index, S and P 500 index fund. Okay. Probably the smartest stock market investment, if you're going to do that. Okay. And you look at the, the historical rates of returns. And if you say, okay, let's say I can get a 7% return every year. Right. If you, if you punch that in and you start with a hundred thousand dollars, it's going to take you a long time to, uh, to even accumulate a million dollars, a very, very long time. Okay. You, you're going to, you're not going to be able to enjoy your wealth. Okay. And that's if everything goes well, plus you're going to pay taxes on that. Whereas with real estate, if you take that, uh, that same hundred thousand dollars and you deploy that, let's say you, you deploy that as 20% investment in a $500,000 property. Okay. And you're getting a, a return rate of 15%. Let's be conservative here. You're going to be rich very quickly. When I say very quickly, I mean like 15 years. Okay, that's 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 you're going to have a significant amount of money. Plus, you're not going to pay taxes on that because at least I'm not sure what the laws are in, in Canada, but in the U.S. we can do a 1031 exchange, which is a tax deferred exchange. So we never have to realize the gains of the property. We can just roll it into another property and continue our investment. As along. long as you have another property, you just right. have to identify another. There's some rules around that. I just sold like four. Actually, I sold. Buy, no, six properties this year and rolled them all into one big commercial property doing a 1031 exchange. So I didn't pay any taxes on a, a huge gain that I made from those, those properties. Yeah. So if people are wondering what John's talking about, it just depending on, and this applies to stocks or any a commodity sale is capital gains tax. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so what kind of strategy did you have originally though for the type of properties that you wanted to acquire? 